Good afternoon and welcome to the virtual public hearing of the Commission on Judicial Appointments. As Chief Justice of California, I serve as Chair of the Commission and our members are Attorney General Rob Bonta and Administrative Presiding Justice Mary Greenwood of the Court of Appeal, 6th Appellate District. Amoy Kim serves as Secretary to the Commission and Jorge Navarrete, the Administrator for the California Supreme Court and the Judicial Council Tech, been helpful in setting up our remote access today. This hearing is to consider Governor Gavin Newsom's appointment of Judge Charles E. Wilson II to the Office of Associate Justice, Court of Appeal, 6th Appellate District. We are in receipt of a letter from Governor Newsom appointing Judge Wilson to fill a vacancy created by the retirement of Associate Justice Eugene Primo. The state constitution specifies that an appointment by the governor to the Court of Appeal is effective when confirmed by the Commission on Judicial Appointment. We received correspondence pertaining to this appointment and we made these letters available to the press and to the public a few days ago. Pursuant to a request by Governor Newsom, the state bars Commission on Judicial Nominees Evaluation has undertaken an evaluation of the qualifications of Judge Wilson for this position. Ms. Stella Nye, Chair of the Jenny Commission, is present today to publicly announce the results of that evaluation and she will do so later in the Judge Wilson has asked that the following persons be called to testify on his behalf. I will list them now and then invite each up separately to the virtual podium. Ms. Carol Ann Wilson, Professor, San Francisco School of Law. The Honorable Risa Pichon, Retired Judge, Santa Clara County Superior Court. And the Honorable Eric Geffen, a Judge of the Santa, Cla Santa Clara County Superior Court. Uh, we invite Ms. Carol Ann Wilson to the podium. Good morning, Madam Chief Justice Kantasaka Uwe, Presiding Justice Greenwood, and Attorney General Banta. I am really deeply honored to be able to speak on behalf of Charles Wilson. I've known Charles Wilson since 1998 when he participated in a summer orientation program. I direct a program at the University of San Francisco called the Academic Support Program. And I have to say that while I am deeply honored to be here. If I could go back and talk to myself in 1998, I don't think I would have been surprised because the qualities that I saw in Charles Wilson at that time have been evident throughout his time as a law student and throughout his career from my observation from the outside. A little bit of history about the academic support program. It's a program in place. Um, it's been in place at the at USF School of Law for over 40 years, and it selects and supports diverse students, um, and uh, usually first generation and first generation college and first generation law school. Uh, the support is provided through a summer orientation program, a lot of support in the first year, and really throughout um, law school. That's a, a formal description of the program, but really it's like a big family, and I'm lucky enough to be the mom or one of the moms. Um, it's a community and a kind of community safety net where people really rely on each other and mentor each other and it extends well beyond law school. So that's the context in which I first got to know Charles Wilson. I, in fact, got to introduce him to legal analysis in the summer orientation program. So I saw him as a baby lawyer, really, um, and I got to watch him develop as a student. Students react in a lot of different ways under the kind of pressure that they're in in law school. It's hard and it is demanding and there's a lot of self-doubt that comes up. And what I saw in him then was that he handled all of that with incredible grace and humility. And even though he was under the same pressures as everyone, of course, and had a lot of self-doubt, just like everyone, he was able to really learn from his mistakes. And um, he always worked to get better. He, he not only did that, but he relied on other people. He asked questions when he needed to. He wasn't afraid to do that. He reached out to others and he shared with other people. He really was a good community participant in a lot of ways. Um, his 
his dedication to getting better and continually being better led to him doing quite well. And so as a result of that, in part, I selected him to be a tutor in the second year. He tutored contracts. And, you know, I chose him because he was a good student, number one. But number two, and equally as important, is who he was. Um, just doing well doesn't mean you're going to be a good teacher or a good mentor. Um, he had the ability to be kind and respectful and to, to also lead and push people. Um, so I selected him for those reasons, but also because he could identify with the students that he was working with. He knew what imposter syndrome felt like. He knew what it felt like to be the only black student in the classroom and being asked to represent his race on a constitutional law question. And he knew how to help students navigate those kinds of things and still learn how to focus on the subject at hand and learn how to be a good law student. He really held up under amazing pressure during law school. He was there for four years, not just three, because he also got a master's degree, a, a business degree. Um, so he extended his time there. Um, during that time, his father was ill. He, his father passed away, and I watched him go through enormous um, emotional trauma over that, but he still held up and was able to graduate and maintain you know, amazing dignity through it all. The same qualities I saw in him as a student continued throughout the past 20 years. We've stayed in, in touch regularly over the years. That's how this program works. It's, it is like a big family and students and alumni regularly connect. Um, he's always given back. Um, I've been able to call on him countless times over 20 years and he's always been there. So for example, in the summer orientation program we, we run, uh, I have lunches and I have four or five lunches and I invite alumni to come and they're fairly informal and I, the, the alums stand up at some point, I introduce them and they just talk from the heart about who they are and what they do and they talk to the students directly. And Charles, he's one of the heavy hitters. He's one of those people I always either try to introduce first or last um, because he has such amazing uh, charisma and uh, speaks so deeply from the heart that I really want his inspiration to you know, stick with the students. I mean, he's done this countless times over the years. He's also attended what we call family night. We have a, a part of the program at the end of our summer program where we invite family members to come. Most of my students don't come from families who are lawyers, so we try to tell the families what it's going to be like and um, what they can expect in terms of their, their students' odd behavior. And um, um, Charles Wilson has come to that on more than one occasion to speak directly to families and talk to them about um, how it would affect relationships, what they can do to help preserve relationships, what it all means, um, how to not interfere. Um, um, he's never, ever turned me down um, for any of these things. He's individually mentored countless students over the years. I've referred people to him many, many times for a lot of different reasons, either because they were interested in his kind of practice uh, or they needed a guiding hand that I thought he would be able to give them. As a judge, um, I was first, you know, I was really heartened when he became a judge. He's exactly who I want to see on the court. Um, and the first thing I ever heard him say is, when he became the chief judge in Palo Alto especially, is that he was so happy to be there because he wanted to give back to his community. This is the community where he grew up. Um, I've, taken, uh, I've taken my students down. We slept all the way down to, um, to Palo Alto on the train and went to his courtroom and he took the time out of his amazingly busy day to speak to them and answer questions, and they got to watch um, some of the hearings going on. Uh, he uh, has done swearing-ins at USF, and most recently, too, in the last four years, he's um, taken on externs, almost exclusively students from the academic support program, so diverse students from all kinds of backgrounds. Uh, I think the first couple of years he had one extern. Then he had three, and this past year he had four, which is amazing. I don't know how anyone can handle that, but he, he somehow can. And um, I, I happened to be at a, a lunch with uh, the four that he had this, this past summer, a really wonderful group of kids. And um, they're basically in love. They, they just 
were so uh, impressed with him and so inspired by him. It was it gave me great heart for future generations. That kind of um, dedication he has to mentoring students, especially students of color and students from from non traditional backgrounds. I know that he has the intellectual and professional skills. I don't have any doubt about that. But on top of all of that, he really, really has heart. And what I've witnessed over both when he was a student, but continually since that time, um, makes me fully support this application. Um, he inspires students to be better students and better attorneys, and he makes me want to be a better person every time I talk to him. We share a similar last name, and if I could claim him as a son, I would. That's my, my joke now, is I'm going to call him my son. Um, for those reasons, I fully support his application uh, or nomination to, to the appellate court. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Wilson. Next, we invite the Honorable Risa Pichon, retired judge, Santa Clara County Superior Court. Nice to see you, Risa. It's nice to see you, Chief, and thank you so much. Chief Justice Kentil Sakauwe, Attorney General Bonta, Presiding Justice Greenwood, I am deeply honored to speak to you on behalf of Judge Charles Wilson. It is a great privilege to present to you the reasons why Judge Wilson will be an outstanding addition to the Sixth District Court of Appeal. I have heard others say that first encounters do not always present a fair representation of the person. In Judge Wilson's case, nothing could be farther from the truth. As I attempted to compose these remarks, one word overshadowed my thoughts, instantaneous, which is not a descriptor of him, but of the striking impression he makes and the time it takes to be impacted by it. I had not met Judge Wilson before a mutual friend introduced us by email, informing me that Judge Wilson had submitted his name for appointment to the Superior Court and suggesting that we meet. At the time, I was the assistant presiding judge. A meeting ensued with Judge Wilson, presiding Judge Brian Walsh and me for about an hour. The conclusion, we had to act quickly. Our court was not the only one for which Judge Wilson was being considered. There was no question Charles was a star whose brilliance must shine from our bench. Upon arrival, his radiant personality drew immediate attention and staff clamored to work with him as his clerk, court reporter, and bailiff. That was 2014. In 2015, I became presiding judge and had the opportunity to personally observe his performance as a judicial officer. He was well liked, admired, and respected by all, attorneys, fellow judges, staff, and justice partners. That speaks to his adaptability, his ability to communicate, and his <laughs> respect for others. Very few can assume a new and different position with such grace and poise and receive high marks and praise from the beginning. His transition from advocate to a position of objectivity and neutrality was smooth and flawless. He quickly earned the reputation as an extraordinarily bright and intelligent individual, admired for his wisdom and sound judgment. And he demonstrated these qualities when, in his second year, I asked him to accept a position as supervisor of one of the court's divisions. An issue had been brewing for some time affecting the court and our justice partners. The perception was the court was in a better position to assume additional tasks and the resulting issues in the community. In his supervisory role, Judge Wilson was asked to find a workable solution to achieve shared responsibilities. Exceptionally astute in building relationships and keenly aware of the pitfalls, he took on the assignment. And after a series of meetings, he was able to craft a resolution acceptable to all with shared responsibilities, and accountability. Because of his insightful manner, he was able to perceive the reasons 
driving the positions of our justice partners, which enabled him to navigate that fine line between people who disagree, but whose positions are worthy of consideration. Judge Wilson possesses other admirable qualities, two of which are indispensable for a judicial officer. And these are courage and independence of thought based on good judgment and sound reasoning. Judge Wilson exemplifies these qualities in a world where criticism flows freely and spreads rapidly. He has demonstrated these qualities even as a new judge at the trial court level, not often insulated from the impact of public opinion. Judge Wilson is a great judge with many talents who could achieve success using them in other ways. He selected the administration of justice and has given impeccable service, first as an advocate and now as a judge. If you vote to confirm his nomination, he will continue to excel at the next level, adding to the collegiality and diversity of the sixth district. He will join a court of brilliant minds sharing his own brilliance to enhance the wisdom and intensity of thought, for which this court is known and respected. I ask you to consider this testimony as you make your decision regarding the stellar qualification of Judge Wilson for confirmation as an Associate Justice of the Sixth District Court of Appeal and the very first African-American Justice in the Sixth District. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge Pichon. Next, we invite the Honorable Eric Geffen, Judge of the Santa Clara County Superior Court. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chief Justice Kantil Sakaue, Attorney General Bonta, and Presiding Justice Greenwood. It's my pleasure to be here today to speak to you about the nomination of Judge Charles Wilson to the Sixth District Court of Appeals. I met Judge Wilson when we were both appointed to the Santa Clara County Superior Court within a few months of each other. Since that time, I've had the pleasure of working closely with him on several assignments within our court, and I'm honored to say that we've become good friends. I have both supervised and been supervised by Judge Wilson. My knowledge of him as a person and a judge lead me to enthusiastically support his nomination. You don't have to talk to Judge Wilson for long to learn what really drives him. It's the principle that just, if justice is to mean anything, it must apply equally to everyone. Getting to know him, I've learned that this commitment uh, began long before he contemplated law school or a career in the justice system, but while growing up in East Palo Alto, a community he still calls home today. It continued while he worked as a deputy district attorney in Alameda County, and today that commitment can be seen every day in his courtroom here at the Santa Clara County Hall of Justice, where everyone who appears before him is treated with decency and humanity. And I've had the ability to watch that uh, on many occasions firsthand and uh, am always impressed with the way his courtroom uh, operates. Judge Wilson is also an extremely intelligent, analytical thinker and is a skilled at research and writing. And I know this firsthand as I found myself on the receiving end of his research and writing skills on more than one occasion. You see, Judge Wilson and I would often discuss and debate legal issues, and occasionally he and I would disagree about an issue. I came to learn that when a disagreement occurred, I could expect to find an email in my inbox from Judge Wilson later that evening with a detailed analysis uh, with cases attached explaining why he was right and I was wrong. I would like to say that I was able to rebut each of those emails, uh, but frankly, the research was always too thorough and well done to allow that to happen. I know that those research skills will serve him well uh, when he is a justice on the Court of Appeals. Judge Wilson is an outstanding individual, an exceptional judge, and I have no doubt will be a superb appellate justice. While the Santa Clara County Superior Court will be worse off for his absence, the Court of Appeal and the people of California will benefit greatly from this appointment. I congratulate Governor Newsom on this superb choice, and I urge the commission to confirm his nomination. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you today about Judge Wilson. Thank you, Judge Geffen. 
Next, we'll hear from the Jenny Chair, Ms. Stella Nye. Good afternoon, Madam Chief Justice, Attorney General Vonta, Presiding Justice Greenwood. I am honored to present this report on behalf of the Commission on Judicial Nominees Evaluation to summarize the basis of the Jenny Commission's rating of Judge Charles E. Wilson II for the Office of Associate Justice of the Court of Appeal, 6th Appellate District. The Jenny Commission conducted its evaluation of Judge Wilson on April 24, 2021, finding him to be exceptionally well qualified for service on the Court of Appeal, 6th Appellate District. According to Commission rules, the rating reflects the Commission's determination that Judge Wilson possesses qualities and attributes of remarkable or extraordinary superiority that enable him to perform the appellate judicial function with distinction. Judge Wilson was born to parents who relocated to California from Texas and Louisiana during the Great Migration. In 1993, he matriculated at the University of California, Los Angeles, inspired by the father of one of his high school friends to become an entertainment lawyer. He graduated with a BA degree, majoring in political science in 1998. That fall, he began a four-year joint JD MBA program at the University of San Francisco School of Law. In law school, his mentor encouraged him to try different areas of law, so he spent a summer working at the Alameda County District Attorney's Office. Judge Wilson obtained a summer internship and then a job offer from Brobeck, Flegger, and Harrison in San Francisco. He graduated with JD and MBA degrees in May 2002. From 2003 to 2007, Judge Wilson worked as a litigation associate, first at Phillips, Spallas, and Angstadt, then at Gordon Reese. In January 20 2007, Judge Wilson joined the Alameda County District Attorney's Office, where he spent approximately seven years as a deputy district attorney. He developed an expertise in domestic violence cases, which was reflected in his caseload and his responsibility for providing training to local law enforcement and community organizations. In 2014, Judge Wilson was appointed to the Santa Clara County Superior Court. From 2016 to 2018, Judge Wilson served as supervising judge of the Family Violence Division. From 2018 to 2021, he served as supervising judge of the Palo Alto Courthouse. Judge Wilson is lauded for his outstanding temperament by court staff, judges, and litigators. His demeanor on the bench is considered so exemplary, it is viewed as a model for all judges. Judge Wilson is exceptionally dedicated to the fair administration of justice. Attorneys praise his fairness, thoughtfulness, and sound judgment. He is deeply committed to equal access to the courts. In 2020, with other bench officers, he formed the court's Equality and Social Justice Committee. Through his work on this committee, Judge Wilson has educated other bench officers on racism, drawing from his personal experiences, and served as liaison to community stakeholders. Judge Wilson is dedicated to his work as a bench officer. He is widely praised for his fairness, intellect, and sound judgment, and for creating a culture of respect in his courtroom. Judge Wilson is sure to enjoy a distinguished career as an appellate justice. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nye. I now invite Judge Wilson to present a statement if he wishes and to answer any questions the Commission may have. Good afternoon, Madam Chief Justice. Good afternoon, Presiding Justice Greenwood, and good afternoon, Attorney General Bonta. It is truly an honor and privilege to be with you here today for my consideration for the Sixth District Court of Appeal. I am humbled, I'm truly humbled by the opportunity to further serve the people of the state of California in this role. When I look back on the last seven years on the Superior Court, one of the privileges and honors that I've had has been uh, as a public servant. And I look forward to the opportunity to talking with you this afternoon about how I plan to further that role, uh, or further that opportunity as a role as a Sixth District Court of Appeal Justice. Thank you, Judge Wilson. A any questions, uh, General Bonta or Administrative Presiding Justice Greenwood? 
Chief, um, I, I know uh, Judge Wilson because we served together on the Superior Court um, in Santa Clara County, never in the same division though, so I, I didn't have that pleasure. Uh, but um, the comments that people have made, it's interesting, you know, uh, they use the word stellar or star or instantaneous. Um, he does have, uh, frankly, a personality that has a kind of star quality to it that is, makes an immediate impact. Um, the voice helps, I'll say, but, but uh, he's, he's blessed with that. Um, but, uh, you know, some people have that and it's, um, it doesn't indicate something deeper. I think the thing that is so impressive about Judge Wilson in the Superior Court and uh, his colleagues have, have spoken to this, um, and um, I know it from, from my meetings with him over the years. We've been able to share some meals together. Um, um, he's a person who's deeply rooted in the community with a very strong sense of integrity. Um, and uh, I think whatever profession he had gone into, he would have taken those qualities with him. But we're very blessed to have him in the justice system, frankly, uh, because uh, he, you've spoken, Chief, so many times about the need for confidence in the judiciary. And part of what, what Judge Wilson does is he really enhances that confidence um, because of his, his own personal story and experiences, but because of his ability to convey those in a way that bridges and communicates those things to everybody. And um, I know that he started that when he was very young, when he was at Crystal Springs High School. Uh, and I had people call me about him to tell me how extraordinary he was in that way. Um, and then what an outstanding attorney and judge he was in addition. So, you know, moving our court uh, so thoroughly into the 21st century and hoping to reflect the community, um, I'm... I'm uh, very honored uh, that he was nominated to join the 6th District Court of Appeal. Um, and Judge Wilson, let me ask you, as I did with Judge Lee, uh, what is it that you hope to offer uh, confirmed to the Court of Appeal? Well, thank you, Presiding uh, Justice Greenwood. Well, like a lot of previous roles I've had, um, I, I've always felt it's important to have different voices in the room. When I was a civil attorney uh, working on drug and medical device cases, uh, oftentimes uh, there were questions about how people felt dealing with particular issues regarding um, end of life circumstances. I had dealt with that uh, with my father who for the last three years of his life dealt with three different forms of cancer. Uh, I was with him um, at his doctor's visits. I was with him when he talked about end of life decisions and choices. And that stayed with me. And so when I was in the room discussing how we should treat litigants at this very uh, precarious stage in their life, I could introduce a perspective that maybe hadn't been considered before. When I was a deputy district attorney in Alameda County, having grown up in East Palo Alto, I knew firsthand in dealing with family and friends who had unfortunate uh, interactions with law enforcement, how circumstances could go really, uh, could go really bad, uh, but for uh, patience, respect by law enforcement uh, at that uh, circumstance. One of the things I realized when I was a deputy district attorney was that Decisions were being made about individuals, uh, their life, their future. That came in the form of charges and ultimately, ultimately sentences. Because I was in the room, I was able to talk to many of my colleagues about what might make the most sense for an individual who's drug addicted, an individual who has mental health issues, an individual who, frankly, uh, didn't have any other opportunities for life. And so we were able to craft resolutions that put many individuals on a better path. Uh, as a judge, 
I've realized that many of the people that come before us are at the um, most difficult stages of their life. And if we don't work together with our uh, law partners, uh, we will not be serving them or the community well. And so my goal, if I were to be confirmed, uh, would to be bring would to bring those discussions into uh, my thoughts and opinions with fellow panel members, so that we can reach conclusions and results that help uh, further the jurisprudence uh, of the law and ultimately provide guidance for our trial courts, our litigants, so that they know and they can be assured that there are people in the room that understand them, that hear them, and frankly respect them. Thank you. Uh, General Bonta. Thank you, Judge Wilson. I think you, you will make an outstanding Associate Justice and you have my support. I uh, did want to note the, um, of course, of, of the many comments of support from your, your intellect and your skill set, your experiences, um, the, the highlighting of your temperament and your demeanor and how you interact with others. I think that's so important. Perhaps it's just something that comes natural to you, or perhaps it's something that you prioritize and focus on. Uh, but could you share a little bit about why um, it's so important to have the demeanor and temperament that, that you have shown to, to those that you work with? What I realized early on was that people who come from different backgrounds, different circumstances, they all have a common uh, feeling of wanting respect. You know, in Santa Clara County, we deal with people who are CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, and we also deal with those that are unhoused. All can be seen in the same morning on the same calendar. And what I realized early on as a judge is simply saying, good morning, Mr. Johnson. Good morning, uh, Ms. Garcia. Made a huge difference in their body language, how engaged they were, how they felt about the process. Because ultimately for me, whether someone has committed a crime, has been falsely accused of a crime in the criminal context, uh, they deserve to be treated as a human being uh, when they come before us. Because ultimately, the value in that ends up keeping credibility for our courts. Uh, we are the single institution that when other branches uh, with their prerogatives make decisions that maybe the community don't feel uh, as good about um, or don't support, my feeling is that they should always, at the end of the day, support our courts. Because as uh, we are, the, oftentimes the place where they come to resolve some very, very uh, important issues in their lives. So in the family context, for example, um, you're dealing with families who uh, are being in many ways torn apart. Um, you're dealing with issues regarding assets. You're dealing with issues regarding uh, custody of children. We have to make sure that when we interact with the community, they feel that they're being listened to, they're being considered, and ultimately we're applying the law fairly and equally to everyone. And so when it comes to the temperament, the temperament is really just the beginning of that. It is the way for which the community can see that when they come into our courtrooms, uh, we're going to start with a baseline of um, respect and uh, adherence to the law. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Judge Wilson, as, as I was thinking about uh, these appointments to the six uh, from the Santa Clara Superior Court, I am reminded about how innovative and uh, ahead of the curve the Santa Clara Superior Court 
has been, at least in the last decade of my experience as chief, and seeing uh, presiding judge uh, Risa Pichon reminded me of that because uh, your court, your, your judges are incredible working in the community and also working with your justice partners and your county board of supervisors, your justice stakeholders, in ensuring a more cohesive leadership and empathetic, should I say, uh, programs. And while I'm fully aware how taxed your colleagues and staff and court family has been over the last approximate two years, 18 months, um, I'm, I'm wondering that given all that Santa Clara has been rich in ideas and honestly way before the curve in technology, I can tell you there were a handful, maybe two or three counties that was thinking the way Santa Clara was a decade ago about technology, about bail, about uh, pretrial programs, about equity and inclusion committees, and your, your court has done fabulous PSAs and other matters about that. I wonder um, if you have a particular program that you hold above all else that uh, we might start to see in the appellate court somewhere. Well, thank you for that question, Chief Justice. One of the things that I'm most proud of uh, as a judge on the Superior Court has been uh, the Equality and Social Justice Committee uh, that uh, we formed uh, last year. We formed this committee because there was an acknowledgement that in many ways we were still so far behind in areas that deal with equality and social justice. Um, obviously, uh, the George Floyd uh, circumstance raised and killing raised uh, awareness to many communities. But those of us who've lived in many of these communities uh, this was not new information. This is not. This was not new news, and in many ways, uh, it provided an opportunity for those of us who cared about making sure all communities um, have a seat at the table for what we do. And so, when we formed the Equality and Social Justice Committee, uh, I became the co-chair of the Outreach Committee. And as a part of that committee, what we decided to do was we would actually set up opportunities for community members to come in and talk to us about what's uh, important to them and where, where we're falling short. And the goal of those meetings is and was for us to listen. You know, oftentimes as lawyers and judges, we like to talk. We like to be the ones um, to basically carry the stage. What's been important and what we've learned so much from uh, in the Equality and Social Justice Committee was that there are so many things that we can do, simple things that we can do uh, to ensure that the citizens of our community feel more uh, comfortable in our courtrooms. Um, one of the areas that we've, for example, discussed was having uh, individuals from different communities who can volunteer uh, in our lobbies to talk to uh, immigrant communities about what the process is, uh, where to go. Um, because what happens when you don't reach out to communities, you continue moving in the same direction that you've always moved in, and you continue to lose the credibility and support of everyone. And what I found over the last uh, year that we've been meeting with the community is that there's been a a feeling from people that I've talked to that they never imagined in a million years that judges would sit down with them to hear from them. And the feedback has been that they are even that much more inspired to do more, to partner with our courts, uh, to do um, outreach to various communities so that we can, again, become better uh, and more responsive to the people uh, that we serve. Thank you, Judge Wilson. I, I very much like that answer. This completes the list of witnesses who will testify here today. 
And I believe the members are ready to vote. All in favor of confirming Judge Charles Wilson for this position, please say aye. 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 On this record, and the correspondence received, the Commission finds the Honorable Charles E. Wilson qualified to be an Associate Justice of the Court of Appeal, 6th Appellate District, and confirms his appointment. Congratulations, Justice Wilson. <laughs> this concludes the formal part of the hearing. In a, in a moment or two, I will be introducing uh, Supreme Court Justice Martin Jenkins, who will be making a few remarks and administering the oath of office to Judge Wilson. Uh, Judge Wilson, I invite you to uh, un get your robe. I understand that you'll be doing that. And in the meantime, I will ask Justice Martin Jenkins to uh, turn his video on. <laughs> Justice Jenkins. Thank you, Chief. Um, uh, I want to uh, say a special uh, thanks to you for allowing me to administer the oath of office uh, this afternoon in your stead uh, to the Honorable Charles Wilson II. I also want to acknowledge uh, our Attorney General, Attorney General Bonta, and the presiding uh, Justice of the 6th District uh, Court of Appeal, Justice Greenwood, and to thank all of you for conducting these important hearings this afternoon. Before I administer the oath, I'd like to say just a few uh, heartfelt congratulatory words to uh, Justice Wilson and his family on this very momentous occasion. At times, it seems like just a few years ago that I met Judge Wilson, but when I look in the mirror, it's clear to me that more than a few years have passed. Um, Charles doesn't reflect those years, but, but I certainly do. Um, when we met, I was a newly minted federal district court judge and Charles was a month or so into his first year of law school at University of San Francisco, the same law school that I attended. Our first meeting was facilitated by Carol Wilson, professor at USF and director of the academic support program who testified earlier in these proceedings. Carol would annually bring the ASP students to my courtroom to watch a law in motion calendar, after which we would retire to my chambers to talk about what they witnessed. I still remember Charles well. It was that award-winning smile that you can't see through the mask today, but he's certainly there. He was inquisitive and humble in a way that reflected a kind of maturity that belied his age and that everyone has spoken about this afternoon. The goal in bringing the students to my chambers was to expose them in real time to a judge's chambers, to make them insiders, to afford them a view of what happens behind the curtain, so to speak. And we hoped that the students would leave not only understanding the importance of working hard in law school, but of also committing to aim higher in terms of their career goals. Having had a real-time experience with a judge like me, who started law school in the very same program they were participating in at that time. Charles used that experience and many others, combined it with his keen intellect and tremendous work ethic, to shape and mold the distinguished career that has led to the nomination that brings us all here today. And in fashioning that career, he's blazed a trail for others to follow. For in Charles Wilson, you are witnessing today what happens when a family, as part of a larger community, of mentors and educators comes together to support the dreams and aspirations of its talented young men and women. I know of what I speak here because I too am a product of that same support. I've been asked many times over the last month or two, what kind of justice will Charles Wilson II be? I haven't had to think long about the answer. Because right after he heard about his nomination, Charles called me and we talked. And he reminded me that when he was appointed to the trial court, I offered a word of caution. And that word was simply this. Once you become a judge, there'll be fewer and fewer people who will be honest with you, who will tell you the truth. And then he said to me, your statement proved accurate. 
but that advice motivated me to examine regularly over my time on the bench whether I'm judging in a way that reflects my core values, compassion, fairness, and appreciation for the possibility of redemption, and as importantly, whether I am avoiding inconvenient truths about how I'm perceived by the litigants and my colleagues alike. I think his words tell you all you need to know about the man who stands before us today and the kind of justice that will invariably flow from his pen. Thank you, Charles, for affording me the opportunity to watch your amazing accomplishments over your distinguished career. And with that, I deem it a point of personal privilege and an honor to administer the oath of office to you. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Charles Wilson II. I, Charles Wilson II. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution to the State of California. And that I take this obligation freely. And that I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. And without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of, of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations. The podium is yours, Justice Wilson. Thank you, Justice Jenkins. Thank you, Chief Justice. Um, first, I would like to thank Governor Newsom for his trust in me and continued effort to ensure that there are diverse and different voices on our court. I want to thank Appointment Secretary Cespedes for his work and courtesy as well to me during this entire selection process. I'd like to thank the Santa Clara County Superior Court judges who have been absolutely amazing uh, to me over the past seven years. I remember when I began on the bench in 2014, uh, I was just flooded with emails and phone calls of future colleagues at that time welcoming me to the bench and also providing me uh, advice about how to begin. Uh, much of that advice uh, became very much a part of how I began my career in dealing with uh, litigants and dealing with colleagues uh, and forming uh, relationships with counsel. And so I thank all of my uh, Superior Court colleagues uh, for that uh, support. I also want to thank the staff of the Santa Clara County Superior Court. Uh, the reality is, and for those of us who have served on the courts know that the staff is the engine by which our courts work. We can't do the work uh, without our staff and administration. And I'd like to give special recognition to Randy Garcia, who I have been honored to work with over the past seven years as a clerk in my department. It's not always easy making me look organized, but he has done an outstanding job, and I consider him uh, to be a friend as well. I'd like to thank you, Justice Jenkins, I also recall uh, that first meeting that we had in your chambers. And I remember seeing uh, a very smart, well-composed, kind man in a very important position. I had never in my life seen so many qualities in a judge uh, in my life. And I also consider uh, it to be an honor 
to be your friend and mentee. And as I've always told you, um, because you've provided me so much of your time, my goal in life has always been to pay it forward. And so uh, when anyone uh, has asked me to serve as a mentor in any way, uh, I have never said no, and I will never say no, because uh, of what you've afforded to me. And there are generations of attorneys and judges and now, I guess, justices uh, who can call you um, a friend and, and now colleague. I'd like to thank the witnesses who spoke on uh, my behalf, uh, Carol Wilson, uh, Judge Pichon, Judge Gaffan. Uh, they all have had a profound impact on my life in various ways, and I've appreciated them taking the time to share their thoughts uh, about me uh, today. I'd like to thank the Jenny Commission members and the Santa Clara County Bar Judicial Nomination Committee. Uh, as I've told them, and I will say it again, I believe we have the finest bench in the country. I believe we have the finest bench in the country in the state of California because people from the community have an opportunity to vet judges just, uh, and justices um, for the courts. And that makes us all better. And so thank you all for your time. I'd also like to thank uh, the Commission on Judicial Appointments. And I'd like to start with uh, Justice Greenwood, who, when I first met Justice Greenwood, she was a colleague of mine on the Superior Court. And I remember uh, at that time this um, special quality, this warmth, this intelligence that always uh, kept me thinking, how can I have an opportunity to further work um, with this person? Uh, she was working in the family division, I was in the criminal division, and after a few years working on the court together, she was later uh, appointed to uh, the Court of Appeal. And I am just ecstatic, but now, after so many years, I have an opportunity to work with Justice Greenwood, and so I very much Look forward to that. I'd also like to thank uh, Chief Justice Kantel Sakauye. One of the things that you should hear from me is that in this past year and a half, we have dealt with some of the uh, effects of COVID. We've dealt with issues regarding social justice reform. And I can't imagine a better leader uh, than you have been uh, to our courts. Um, one of the things that, uh, and to your question earlier about what we've been most proud of in terms of the Equality and Social Justice Committee, you should know that that was a consequence of many of the statements that you released on behalf of the Supreme Court regarding the issues of the day. And uh, I'd like to tip my hat to you uh, for all of your work in that effort, and I look forward to working with you in the months and years uh, to come. And to Attorney General Bonta, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to be with you here today. And uh, your office did a very thorough uh, review of my background, which uh, I appreciate it as, as well. And I'd also like to say a few words to or about Justice Primo, who is the justice who retired uh, earlier in the year, and uh, we lost him, unfortunately, uh, shortly thereafter. Um, and if any of his family or friends are watching, I want them to know that my goal is to do everything I can to fill or try to fill what I think to be some very big shoes that he left. He was a stalwart in our county and in our district, and I look forward to um, continuing his legacy. Uh, I want to uh, tell my future colleagues, uh, or current colleagues now that have been sworn in on the 6th District, that I so very much look forward to working with you as well and um, trying to be uh, a part of the progress that I believe has been made and is being made with regard to uh, how cases are being uh, handled uh, in our district. Um, now, uh, I'm going to turn to Judge Cynthia Lee, who um, 
when we started this process really earlier in the year in terms of when the reviews began, she was one of the first individuals to send me an email. Um, she sent me an email which indicated that um, she supported my nomination and no matter what, uh, she was there with me. And in the process where you have multiple people having put their names in, uh, we both had our names in at the same time, that's not necessarily an easy thing to do. Um, but I'd like to tell her here that that meant so much to me. But that is very much consistent with the individual uh, that I've grown to know and that I also look forward uh, to working with uh, in the months and years to come. She is an exceptional person and I know will be an exceptional justice. I'm going to turn now to my family. Uh, I'm going to start with my wife, my partner, uh, Kate Wilson. I met my wife in 1995 when uh, we were both uh, students at UCLA. And I met her at the right time in my life because uh, as much as I think I was a fair student, um, she impressed upon me the need to be a great student. She saw in me things that I don't know that I saw in myself. And maybe, I don't know if it was a week or two after we met, our first date was at the library. And we went to the library every Saturday for, I believe, the next year. Um, and just an amazing person in my life. And I'm so lucky uh, to call you my wife and my friend. Um, and I would not be here without you. I'd like to also thank my son, uh, Charlie Wilson, who is 13 years old. And he doesn't realize it, but he also gives me a gift every day. Every day, I get to see the world through the eyes of a 13-year-old. I get to see the world through the eyes of a young man of color who's dealing with so many issues, so many complex dynamics. And when I go into work each day and I see uh, those men and women uh, come before me uh, who have children of their own, who have the same uh, challenges in, in some ways, I have to think back and think, uh, what can I do to make their lives better than it was before they met me? And that is in no small part um, because of my ability to slow down and think about how uh, it might be for a 13-year-old child to deal with uh, the world and, and sometimes the challenges uh, that face them. The next person I'd like to thank is my sister, uh, Cassandra Wilson. My sister was literally there from the beginning. She is older than me. And so uh, it wasn't always easy to deal with her little 13-year-old brother, uh, or her little brother, but she always ultimately uh, made time for me. She always uh, gave me a hug when I needed it. She was always there at those times um, that you need a family member there for. And so uh, to my sister, Cassandra, thank you. Next, uh, my niece, Kyla, who I will note it is her birthday today, 21 years old. That is a huge deal. Um, and I've seen you from a little baby now to a 21-year-old woman, and I am so impressed. And I'm so proud of you. Um, and thank you for being here uh, today. Next, I'm going to turn to my parents, uh, my mother, Vernita Wilson, and my father, uh, Sammy Wilson. I'll start with my father, uh, Sammy Wilson, who is uh, no longer with us. But he taught me so much about what it means to be a decent, honorable, and responsible person. I couldn't help but think when I'm hearing from the people talk about me, they're really talking about him. Um, he didn't necessarily care whether I was a lawyer or a doctor 
or um, I worked in a factory. His bottom line was, how do you treat people? How do um, you value people? And so that has been one of those mainstays that has stayed with me stay with me uh, to this day, and uh, I thank him uh, for that. Next, I'm going to talk about my mother, Bernita Wilson. Bernita Wilson, uh, from day one in my life, has been all about uh, making sure that I understood that my voice counted. Uh, oftentimes, when you're growing up, as a young man, a young man of color, uh, you may not think that your voice counts or it doesn't count as much as maybe others. She never, ever let me think that way. And she was always there to make sure that there was a pathway for me for my future. Uh, one of those decisions was to make sure that I received um, the best education that she could provide uh, for me academically. And I don't think, and I, in fact, I know that I would not be here but for all of her work, all of her dedication uh, to me and my sister uh, throughout the years. And so I want to thank you because this day is about uh, you as well. And so with that, uh, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for being here today, and I absolutely look forward uh, to getting to work and doing the business of the people of the state of California. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justice Wilson. This concludes our hearing. Everyone take care, and I think you said the magic words, uh, Justice Wilson, back to work. <laughs> Thank you. Bye now. Thank you.